Page 47, Moccasin Dance. 4-4 four, four time, no sharps or flats. You think C major, actually this is an A minor. Remember A minor has the same key signature as a C major. And it wouldn't hurt to go ahead and do my scale video on A minor. To learn the A minor scale. It's all the white keys, although I teach the harmonic minor, which just, you got one black key involved. I explained it in the video. Right hand first. Starting on fifth finger on E. And frankly, I wish you'd just cross out these finger numbers out. You only need the first finger number. You don't need the others. So don't be reading finger numbers here. Read notes here. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So, and the second line is similar. Let's go down to the third line. Now you got to move up. Because your last note in the last line is here, and your thumb is just move up. It's between a phrase. I'll talk phrasing in a minute. Just move up and look. You can do that. Another way you can do this, many times we do, is since in the third line you got repeated notes, I can play the first note in the third line with third finger. I'm here. And then thumb. That's another way of doing it. So I don't have to use the thumb twice in a row there. It's here. And then the fourth measure, it's an E flat. Watch the E flat. Fourth line. And then you have, you got to come back down fifth finger like you were at the beginning. Last line. Second measure, it's an A, and then the A and E, A, E, and then here. So, left hand, you have an A and an E, and for the most part, that's it. Well, let's talk about a little technique on playing repeated chords. There are different ways of doing this. You're going to need to do this fairly softly. Claps in the wrist with each one. It's very gentle. It doesn't give you any articulation, so you don't know how, how loud or short to, or how connected to make them. It doesn't say. I'll come back to that in a little bit. It's just the technique wise. Just be very gentle. Lower the hand down gently and claps the wrist with each one. You don't play them real short, but they can't be connected because the piano won't let you. So. And then in the third line, you're coming to here. So you just make sure you can do that. Because the beat goes on. You can't hesitate the beat. This is the drum. It's got to keep going. And you do that for a while. And then fourth line, you're here. And then thumb on the just cr crutch up and thumb. Put you back down here. Left hand. Both hands together here. Uh, third line, you're up here. And then the fourth line. Much it. Add in the articulation. Well, they don't give you much call here. You have a slur. You're going to slur it anyway. I don't know why they bothered. But in the third measure here, lift up. We want to hear some silence there. And it's only the right hand, not the left. The left hand's just doing its thing. And then in the th now just briefly on these slurs, like the first line. A lot of people, you can put a little separation in front of the slur if you want. Some people don't, they'll connect it. Typically, you'd put separation in. So, you have to experiment. It's an interpretive thing. Do you want the separation before the slur 
or not. I mean, you'll put it in after the slur, but sometimes you put it in before, but not always. Third line down, you're up here. Now, I would suggest you can do that. Technically, that's what's written. I think you could connect all those. To me, that sounds better, so. But written is the other way. You did the same thing in the last measure. And then the fourth line is here. And then the last line you have accents. The last four measures is a bit of an overkill in my opinion, but they put accents, okay. And on these, the next to the last measure, the accented notes separate these just a little bit. To bring out the accent just a little bit. It's an interpretive thing. Some people would not separate them, they would just accent them. Again, I think it's a bit of a overkill because on piano, when you get loud, an accent just makes it a little louder. So, in my opinion, you don't need accents there unless in the next to the last measure you wanted them to be separated, then an accent kind of helps the a person know, oh, I should maybe accent. It's an interpretive thing, but generally when you get accented notes one after another, you might separate them. Not always, maybe. In this case, I would separate them. Then we have the dynamics. Well, it goes to the melody. It's the right hand. Sort of loud. Keep the left hand soft. We want this to be the drum. That's all it's doing. It's in the background, keeping the beat. line down, now you're loud. That's the right hand. And you echo that. And there's an accent on that first note of it. It's loud. Get in those accents and then very loud. And then come down because when you got very loud, you also got loud in the left hand. But it's the right hand that's very loud, the left hand is just loud. And then this, the left hand is going from loud down to soft. It's just this. That way when you hit the next measure, the left hand's soft and the right hand can do it sort of loud. And then the last line, the last four measures, you're loud with accents. I, I, again, I have problems with the accents, but it's just loud. Both hands. And now you can do both hands loud here. Very loud, actually. Like so, all the way to the end. It says very lively. Well, we had lively before, now we got very lively. You have to think about dancing. It is a dance. Idea. It's, it's a dance. How fast do you want to dance it? That's the way it goes. Now, roadmap. Where do we go when? How do we do this? It's not just straight start to finish. You see the repeat signs in the first and second endings at the bottom. At the fourth line down, the beginning of the third measure, there's a reverse repeat sign. You keep it in mind. In the last line, first two measures, you have first and second ending. Well, so you're going to play the, the fourth line and then so you go to the last line, you play that first measure, and then you repeat, because there's a repeat sign, you take you back to the reverse repeat sign, the line above it, and you play those three measures again, and then you come back down, and now you skip the first ending. You've already done it. Don't do it again. You go to the second ending and finish it off, is all. They sort of like added one extra line to this. It's one line longer than it looks. I like to play it slowly with you together to make sure we have the notes and rhythms. I'm not going to do dynamics, I'm just going to do the notes and rhythms and articulation. So I'll give us four counts. One, two, ready, 
go.